come out of her, my people. All truth is not kind to hear. There's a bitter truth as well as a sweet truth. Come out of her, my people. Come on, bro, Spinny. This is a beautiful day because in the past year or so, I've always uh, presented the word to uh, primarily pagans. <laughs> so this is a very special day for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So bless his holy name. We're going to... Uh, I'm going to start with a little bit of testimony in the beginning, but we're going to definitely go into some learning. Ready for that? Yes, sir. And everything's going to pivot on his precious word. But uh, as you, uh, most of you know that uh, I'm a representative of Yale in a uh, military setting, so it has always been pretty interesting to, when it comes to presenting his word. Uh, to people who come from all different walks of life uh, except the Hebrew walk. And to call them out of deception into the truth, there's one manual that I have primarily used, which is in your lap right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And if we as his children, children of promise, not children of the flesh, children of the spirit, understand the importance of Yahshua that you're holding in your in your hand can everybody hear me yes, yes sir the word of Yah the word of Yah had to become flesh so that we can have an example to to walk to walk out this this life of testimony right. hallelujah. hallelujah so for example, in John chapter 16, right, Yahshua talks about the comforter, mm -hmm. right? How many of you have a really experiencing comfort these past few days in the tents? Yes, sir. See, I don't see everybody's hands going up. So that tells me that some of us are still comfortable of the world. I mean that. I mean that from the bottom of my heart. Especially, that's good. I like that. Is that am I crossing the monitor? Is that why it's the feedback? Okay. All right. So, hallelujah. Well, here's the thing. You know, being in the military, we have to give up a lot of our comforts. If you don't understand selfless service, you cannot be part of the military. So that's already there. You got to have that baseline. Let's pull it back to, the, to, our, to us as a people, right? To us as a people, we, are, we, we need to understand that in Romans chapter 12, it talks about what? Reasonable service. Reasonable service. There is a reasonable service expected of us. Apostle Paul leaves us with a commandment to not conform to a pattern that is, that's not been written in the book. Unfortunately, most of us have loved the pattern of this world because that's what we've been indoctrinated, indoctrinated with the, uh, by the longest time. Amen? Amen? Today's message is going to deal with anti-conformity. We're going to use a little bit of logic using the word to understand why we must become anti-conformists. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because why? What, what does it say in Romans chapter 12? To not conform to the pattern of this world. That's right. That's because right. this world has a pattern. Right. The military has a pattern. That's right. The churches out there have a pattern. Amen. Right? Each and every people group have a pattern and a culture, and a tradition, and the doctrines that they put out among their people. Right. So all of these things we got to let go. Amen? Amen? 
generationally too that have clung on to us. A lot of these teachings that that you just it is innately in you. Yes, sir. Innately in us, and a lot of times we display it. The other day I had a good conversation with a with a brother at the fire pit. You know, bringing up being brought up in the Catholic faith. Mm-hmm. Right, being brought up in the Catholic faith. You know, out of nowhere, you, you know, you you taught all these unnecessary rituals, rituals that bring about salvation. And how many of have, how many of us have strove to find that place of peace in these other religions? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yes sir. Each and every one of us, mm-hmm. even atheists, strive for that peace, that place of peace. Agnostics. Long for that place of peace in their little world of faith. They too have faith. Deus. Right? Hallelujah. So, here, anti conformity. We're going to look at the word conform because a lot of us still like the pattern of this world. We have, we have to come forward and admit it. All right? Amen. Yes, sir. We do. We do. Why? Because for the longest time we've been brainwashed, indoctrinated to believe that this world does offer us a, us a way out. What are some of those ways out? Hmm? How many of, our, of us have been told that we can't survive in this world without a being part of the system, or being part of the credit, debit, part of the, their ledger. Amen? Okay, so, but what has been happening is, through history, all through history, one thing we've, we've known is that um, we, have ex- we have clung on to these temporal pleasures because they have somehow, some way, seemed appealing. Okay, credit systems. Okay, we can go on. We can put down 401k. Okay, how many of us still have 401k? Huh? IRA. How many of us lost value in the great big uh, year of 2008? So there goes the discussion. Are you going to? Are we going to continue to conform? Right? Some of us are going to walk out of here. Some of us have to be in the system until we get out of some of these clutches. Who? Not who, but hallelujah. That's what we say in the military. But but you know what I'm talking about. We have bought into a mindset. This is what it is. That's what this is all about, brothers and sisters. It's a mindset. Who? State of mind. State of mind. So once we realize where our state of mind needs to be, mm-hmm. where liberty really truly lies, yeah. as it yeah. says in Corinthians, mm-hmm. right? Where, where Yahshua is, is what? Liberty. Right? Whom the Son sets free yeah. is free indeed. Yeah. Then why do we still lust after this? Why do we still continue to not understand 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17? Why do a lot of us still not understand the clutches of lust of the eyes, Uh lust of the flesh, pride of life? Yahshua himself deals with these three categories in Matthew chapter 4. And he combats it. He literally, he strives. He strives with the demonic spirit. Teaching, schooling, being the schoolmaster. To to the, the, the demonic power telling where the word truly originates from. Who the word, who is the author of the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
So, but a lot of times we, we, a lot of us, we will walk out of here. Majority of us are going to walk out of here. And when I would say walk out of here, leave outside the wire, leave the compound, leave the community, and we're going to be tempted. Temptations are there. Distractions are there. Because life still exists. Life still exists. And if life still exists, we are going to somewhere and somehow yield to temptations and the distractions. That's what the world is full of. That's right. So because we cannot bear fruit without who? Without? Yahshua. Who is Yahshua? The Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See how beautiful and precious His Word is? And if we truly understand that we need to uphold and really have His Word up against, in us, not like Pastor said, in our inward parts and put it into practice. Even going through these feasts. Even going through these feasts is is a time to ask ourselves how much we love, how much are we going to really truly commit to the, to the Word? Because that's who we're going to be married to. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's who we're, we are really going to be merged with. And He is coming for, and, this, and exactly is what Pastor was talking about, is Him being the temple. We are right now in this world, we are representatives to exposing sin. So what it says in John chapter 16, we are representatives when it comes to exposing sin. We are representatives when it comes to exposing His righteousness. What is righteousness? Pastor just got done talking about righteousness. Righteousness, His standard, His commandments, not just wearing it, but actually living it, doing it, right? His laws. Hallelujah. So you got those three categories. You got sin, you got righteousness, and then what else you got? Judgment. So he talks about three categories that we must have within us at all times by possessing what? The spirit that activates the word. Hallelujah. So... Let's get into the scriptures a little bit and really put this in perspective. So, internet land out there, don't think that I'm taking things out of context. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at what it says. All right, so before we go into scriptures, I want to write out some uh, pivotal things here. So there are a lot of people that are going to, even Hebrews are included in this package. Right? We can't exempt ourselves. Right? All of us are vulnerable. Why? Because it's a state of mind. Because our mind is constantly being... It's up to us who we are going to allow our mind to be molded. Are we going to allow the Word to mold our mind? Or are we going to allow the world to mold our mind? Because the world carries a pretty intricate system right now. Which is... So with, the, with another W that's been going rampant for quite a few centuries. Westernization. Yeah, that's, that's one of the two. But using some of these systems, coercing people to believe, persuading, convincing them through temporary pleasures to realize that conforming to their pattern is more appealing than a transformed state that the word of Yah talks about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, say say a lot of us continue, say we backslide, because we're we're known known to be backsliding people. Let's talk about it. It says in Psalm 78, history of our people as constantly forgetting. Mm-hmm. We're a forgetful creature. Oh, yeah. 
we, that's just innately in our behavior. We love to forget. Our parents could tell us something. We're quick to forget. So if that's in the, in the natural state, how much more critical is that in the spiritual state? Now, I'm not saying about parents that were bad examples. I'm talking about parents who really made logical sense, yet we completely reneged on some of the things what they told. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So conform, conformity leads to what? I don't know how many can see out there. All right? When you read Psalm 78, for example, you can take notes. You can write down some of these scriptures. Um, I don't want to take too much time and uh, read per verbatim all the scriptures, but let me tell you something. The children of Israel, we have a high potential of losing what Yah have bestowed upon us. We're, we, we, we're people who can quickly lose what, God, what Yah innately put in us. Yeah. Look at Adam, for example. Right. Let's take this all the way back to the Genesis. Look at our, the first son, Adam. You look at Adam, and you realize, here's a man that Yah created beautifully, wonderfully. Dawit uh, later talks about it in Psalm 139, about this beautiful state, he, how he created us. Hallelujah. Then Adam quickly forgets. He quickly forgets. Why is he so, why are we as a people so quick to forget Yah? Why are we as a people so quick to become disloyal to Yah? You know, this was supposed to be a scriptural teaching, Pastor, but uh, this is the way Yah is taken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because one thing Yah has been really instilling in my, heart, in my heart, and Pastor confirmed it past few days too, and I was like, wow, Spirit of Yah is right on, is loyalty. How much are we going to commit to Yah's word? How serious are we about Him? Depending on how serious we're about Him is how far we're going to go. When it hits the fan, which it's going to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's the trends are there. When this conformity that leads to deformity, and people still not realizing that they're deformed, and they're going to crash and burn, some of them still not realize they're lean, being led to the slaughter. We'll, we'll forget, we'll forget, we'll continue to live in forgetfulness. And it will be too late for them to realize, like Pastor said, some of them on the radio, I think it was, somebody, so you're gonna, you're gonna, we're going to have people call last minute, saying, you know what, just like Noah's time. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to have people last minute calling up, saying, hey, you know what, can I get on the ark? Can I have this way? Can I buy my way in? Can I buy my way into possessing the miraculous power he has put in you? Luke twenty two thirty six talks about being worthy to escape. So there is a damnation coming upon this world. There is a damnation coming upon this system. There is a damnation coming upon the children of flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, realize as we go through these feast days, how much of a committed people we are called to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I mean, no matter how much struggles we need to go through, how many, how many comforts we got to just say, you know what? Don't none go with me. Still I will follow. Right? This is, a, this is a song that I sang even to the soldiers, but they don't, they don't, they don't understand. Right. Why? Because it's a state of mind. mind. Because they still believe in the systems. They be still believe in the systems. And no matter how many collapses, no matter how many collapses hit them, people 
still will continue to love. Because the world is all they can feel. Hallelujah. Lust of the eyes. Lust of the flesh. Pride of life. All of those things we can touch. Senses, right? Talking about your senses. You can touch it. You can feel it. You can see it. That's what I love, brother. That's what I like. That's what I'm going to cling on to. That's what I'm going to cleave to. Hallelujah. And what's going to end up happening is that the spiritual transformation that the apostles even talk about. I'm not even going to, much, going to go much into the renewed covenant. I mean, the uh, Holy Scriptures, but let me touch a, a, a few scriptures at least on um, in, the, in the renewed covenant. For example, let's go to 1 Peter chapter 5. In 1 Peter chapter... Let's go to 4 instead. He talks about rejoicing in trials. Rejoicing in trials. You know, in this journey that I've been through this past year or so, you know how many times I have been put in a predicament where I've, I've had to endure reproach. I've had to endure um, <coughs> pagans ridiculing the truth that I hold. Hallelujah. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Nothing may be trying you right now as intense as you think it may be trying. But there is a trial that is coming this way. Hallelujah. As though some, some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as you are partaker. Partakers of what? Christ's sufferings. That when his glory shall be revealed. That's, that's the judgment we're talking about. Okay. That when his glory shall be revealed, you may be glad also with exceeding joy. That will be a day of jubilation, yes, brothers and sisters. When you see, right? I mean, what does it say in Revelation? You're going to see blood up until the... Oh. So, count it as gain when you are ridiculed. When you s just simply say the word Sabbath. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 You know, I was in the situation where as a chaplain, you know, I had um, the day of Sabbath set aside for soldiers who wanted to come. And you know, it's unfortunate. I, I probably had one, 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 one particular time with an um, ex-Marine, actually, as a contractor. He came and attended. You know... Later on, many weeks later, it was time for him to go back home. He, he said, you know what? You put the word in such a way that I was really, truly able to understand. And here's a man that is in, in his almost 60s. Mm. And he is he's testifying to me that Yah's spirit spoke to him, the word, in such, in a, such an impactful way that he's never, ever heard before. Right? That religion never really clarified. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, in minority, in, in such a small group of people, and all the other services, no one really came. Now, did that discourage me? At times it did. It's normal. But at the same time, does that mean that we, do I stop keeping the Shabbat? No. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So that's the same thing I'm talking about. There are going to be people that ridicule you for standing. We being so a few. We being so few. Being ridiculed. At times, times to be ridiculed are coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at what Joseph had to endure. Look at what Daniel had to endure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says that if you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you. For the spirit of glory... And of Yah rested upon you, 
On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. You know, early on we passed a touch on the word throne. It's a beautiful, you know, the understanding that we must have about Yah is simply this, right? That we become part of his presence. In that, in, when we're not talking about this realm. We're talking about when we cross over from this dimension to Him. What does uh, 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 John say in Revelation? What does He talk about His presence? What does He say? In Revelation chapter 20, let's quickly go there, if, or we can jot it down. In 21, He says, I saw no temple therein. For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. Hallelujah. So what does that tell us? Logically, what does that tell us? It tells us that our sacrifice today, our sacrifice today gets us to be part of Him. Because without Him, we know that we can't bear any fruit. Hallelujah. So how many, how many Christians do you know out there just... Running into brick wall. Because they're not bearing any fruit. Who was it the other day? I can't remember who was. It. I was talking about uh, these. Uh, was Dustin, you, you told me about this brother that came to the walk, came to the Christian walk. No change. You're doing, you're reading, and you're keeping, but there's no change. No change. Why? Because you haven't, you, you don't understand His Word. You don't, you don't have His Spirit. You're still living in religion. You're, you're transformed. You got religious transformation. Yeah. Not spiritual transformation. Right. Hallelujah. Wow. So, this is the significance of His presence. We understand that by Revelation 21. Now, let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 4. And take some more pleasure in, in the trials that we're about to face in, in the weeks, months, years to come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, it says, If you be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are you, for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. On their part he is evil spoken of, but on your part he is glorified. But let none of you suffer. You suffer as a murderer, or as a thief, or as an evildoer. Or as a busybody. We know there's plenty of... Right there. Still trapped in conformity. Conforming to the pattern of this world. Fulfilling verse 15. Hallelujah. Yet if any man suffer as a... The word Christian is there. But we know who we're talking about. Right? Let's change that slang word into the right word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify Yah on, on this behalf. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of Yah. Right here. Right here. Here is where we need to make sure our baseline is correct. Yes, sir. That's right. It begins with us as a people. We are a people. We are a nation. What does he talk about in chapter 2? Peculiar people. Holy nation. So he talks about all these characteristics. But they're, they're not easy to attain. You can't just become a royal priesthood. That's right. That's right. That's true. Yes, sir. That's right. You can't just become a chosen generation. No. You can get called. So what it says in Romans 9. Take time and read Romans 9. Not everybody that are Israelites are. We need to take time and think. Let's slow down and really think. Are we truly Israel? This is a question that, this is why Paul constantly says, examine your hearts. Take time and ask yourself, are, how serious are we about him? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How serious are we about him? 
How far will we go for him? How far did he go? How far did Yahshua go for us? So if he went all the way, what does he expect the bride to do? Let's put our house in order. Hallelujah. So peculiar people that we should show forth the praises of him. This is what it talks about. If we are transformed by his spirit, renewed and regenerated, yes, sir. it calls for us to show forth the praises. You know what that means? Show forth the praises. That means it begins with us. It begins with us to be people that witness. We call ourselves to be his witness. The life of testimony should begin with us. Hallelujah. So showing forth what? Showing for the praises of him who has called you out of darkness. Out of that right there. Out of that world. Into the Word. Hallelujah. Into the Word. And love for Yahshua. That's what the Word is, saints. If we truly understand that, we understand that concept. You know, I ran, the, I ran through this, con this concept, ran through the thick heads of the stiff-necked people in the system, and they don't understand. They don't understand the significance that word became flesh and dwelt among us and fail, also failing to understand that he existed and taking Ephesians chapter 2 in, out of context. Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 2 is what most Christian uh, denominations use as a fuel. Right, sister? Hallelujah. You know what I'm talking about. Not understanding that what we were foreordained to do. That reasonable service. We were always expected to keep that from the very beginning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To show forth the praise. It started with Adam. But he's jacked up. That's right. So everything had to be reinstated. Everything had to be put back in order. What man messed up. So all of these sacrifices and all of these toils that people had to go through. But through all of that, we read about the murmuring. We hear about the complaining as we read in Psalm 78. Now we can read through all of those books. A good summation is Psalm 78. We take time and read. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God, which Yah has before ordained. Way back there. Way back there, we were crafted for one thing, to bring Him glory. That's right. Through our loyalty, through our obedience. Yeah. Self, self, service and sacrifice cannot be given to Yah without obedience. That is what obedience is. Right. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is what obedience is. Service and sacrifice. You know, that's when your works actually grow legs and show forth fruit. Hallelujah. So you got service here. And all of these become real action words when faith, right? These become action words and help us understand that, man, from the very beginning, we were crafted to bring forth praise. Right? Children of Zion. Hallelujah. You know, in order for us to be perfect, in order, in order for us to... See, here in, in the transformed state, spiritual transformation... There's a few things that happen here that people, people will not get to. Such state, the state of being perfect. 
Because that's what we're going through. We're going through this refining process. That's what people have, they, they revert back to here. They revert back to here because, first of all, you got a lot of these organizations saying that you'll never be perfect. You don't even need to try. You might as well just give up now, right? The only way you can be established is you come here and you give us the money, right? You come here and you make sure you, when the offering plate goes through back and forth, make sure you put a few hundred dollars in there, right? So the parking lot can be smooth. <laughs> right? So there's no potholes out there. They got trees on every section of the parking lot. This is the nonsense that we have left in order to be established in the faith, in order to be perfected. So why would we leave here and start loving this? Because some of us still like the entertainment of the world. Some of us do. Some of us still, the other day, I don't know who it was. Um, so who's your favorite actor? Right here, we're, 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 talk, we're having these type of conversations in our, and we're supposed to be feasting. Well, who's your favorite actor? You know how that, that stirs up, what's, what stirs up in me when I hear those type of conversations? So please don't converse things like that in front of me. Being a priest of Yah, I take Yah's word very seriously. Because even with even to the souls, I've been very careful. It's like you know, when I hold the word of Yah, I tremble. This is a this is this you you're talking about manifestation. This is a, this is the word that became flesh and showed us the way. And when we take that, we as men, we take that in our hands. I'm talking to the men right now. We need to really conduct this in a serious manner. Because we are the only representatives when we go back out there. And those, of, those men out there listen to me right now. When we go out there into this conformity, into this temporal appeal, what do we got to show forth? Show forth the praises of Yah. Yes, but, but, but by doing what? By keeping His word. You know, it's one, one thing that you constantly hear through, the, through a lot of this. I like the sister. I like the word. I used it. You know, I listened to the Granny's newsletter, and I love this word that you use, churchianity. You know, I used this word with an Episcopalian soldier, and he, uh, he looked at me like, um, you know, he's one of those analytical ones. He looked at me like, oh, uh, that's a made-up word, right? Take it, take it as you want. Take it as you like it. I mean, the reality is, that's exactly what it was. What it is. Yeah. And in churchianity, they teach you that, you know what, chaplain, I really don't know the perfect will of Yah. I really don't know the perfect will. What is the will of God? What is the will of God? Well, have you read His Word? Do you read His Word? In order to understand the will of Yah, you got to read his word. What, is he, what does Paul say in Romans chapter 12? Let's turn over there and maybe I'll uh, give the reins back to you, Pastor. Here. Chapter 12 is, you know what it says? I want to touch on both verses. It says, I beseech you, brethren, I'm begging you. I'm begging you, brethren, by the mercies of y'all, that you present this temple. That will be married to Yahshua. That's right. Okay? As a living sacrifice. Acceptable. Not one that is jacked up, legs all broke up, and you're trying to go laid up on the altar. Living sacrifice. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. Without blemish. Without spot. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. Present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto you, which is your reasonable service. 
if there's anything that we can live for in this world, it's this one thing right here. He is plainly putting what our service is. How awesome is that? It doesn't get any better than that. When he, when he puts it in ABCs. Elementary. He's saying, he's, he's right now saying, hey, this is all I'm asking of you. Can you carry that out? And then he goes on. He gives you how you can carry that out. In the very next verse he says, you know what? This is how you can accomplish this mission right here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The only way you can carry this mission out, Operation Reasonable Service, Hallelujah, is this. Be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world. Don't bite what westernization has to offer. Whether that be BET, Showtime, This message is primarily for the children too. There's a lot of us still love this world. And if we love this world, we have not understood, and we will not understand the love of Yah. We will not. Hallelujah. He says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed, he says, by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect? There's that word again. Oh, I don't know. I don't think this walk, you know, you, you're never going to find perfection in this walk. This perfect, perfect thing, you just remove perfect from. This, these are the type of things that you hear from people who are trying to get out. <laughs> trying to get out of the walk of obedience. We're saying, you know what, man, please. Like uh, I was talking to Brother Rich, you know, yeah, grace, man, you know. I'm under the blood, so, uh, you know, blood, you know, it's blood, blood, blood. I can do whatever I want to do. That's what most of us have come out of. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We have come to the truth to understand that, there, there, that he's calling us to be perfect. And then he tells us, which is what? The will of? Father. Yeah. That's right. So there you go. If there's ever a place in the word that says, will of God, I don't know, what, what is the will, of, what is his will for me? What is his, I don't know his will. First of all, you're thinking it in an individual perspective. We are a people, we're a nation, we're a collective, we're a community. If you're an individual, you're not going to survive. Only way you're going to survive this faith is... If you come together and become this collective that we are, this community that we are, there is no way you're going to survive whatever systems. And you say, oh, yeah, I'm in the faith. Oh, yeah, I'm a Hebrew. I'm a Hebrew Israelite. But you're still standing by yourself. Not going to make it. Hallelujah. You're not in the will of Yah because this is for this is for a people. This is for not an individual. Amen. That's right. How many of you are understanding this? Is, this is reference. This is reference with what? John chapter 15. You cannot exist of yourself. You're not going to bear fruit. He's longing for a people that bears fruit. Hallelujah. So, if that be the case, now you know the will of Yah. The will of Yah is for a people to be lusting. If you want to use the word lust, go ahead. Lusting after the transformed state, which is a trans oh, yeah. spiritual transformation. Spiritual transformation, becoming anti-conformist to this world. And being conformist to what? To His word. Hallelujah. I'm going to close right there and hopefully we can, this will really turn into a lesson. But nonetheless, I pray that each and every one understood the significance. The significance, this, there's three, four pages of notes here, but I don't want to take too much time. But I, I pray that you understood your, understand your history. That you understand the pattern that we must walk in. And thirdly, we understand our identity. 
You know, when I was coming from the airport, Pastor put on the beautiful song for me. Um, you know, the spirit of Yah. Now, that, that was the first time I actually hearing the song in its entirety. Um, what was that? Humble? Humble thyself. Was, it, was that the song? Yeah, We Are Israel. Yeah, that, that beautiful song right there. The first time listening to it. Because, you know, in Afghanistan, you can't really get good uh, streaming. So you can't hear the song in its entirety. So listening to this to the song in its entirety for the first time, Spirit of Yah put one word in my heart. Identity. The sense of identity blanketed yeah. over the people that day. Blanketed. That's what the Spirit of Yah yeah. convinced my heart. It blanketed upon the people that very day. Providing each and every one that was gathered here a sense of identity. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So when we understand what we came out of, Okay, some of us may not entirely be able to come out of it, but Yah knows the intent of our heart. Right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Knowing our history, reading Psalm 78, we understand that we at times have become a backsl- backsliding heifer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, realizing our history, understanding the pattern we must walk in, possessing that identity, crossing over from this, dimension into Yahshua. Hallelujah. That's a summation of a little bit what Yah wanted me to talk about. Bless each and every one of you. I pray that um, His Word illuminated your heart. And I'm sure Pastor will expound a little bit more as he always does. And I, I love it. So bring it, Pastor. Thank you. Hallelujah. Bless His holy name. Hallelujah. Good word. Hey, ain't y'all glad that we're not in your day with all these um, uh, philosophical. Where are they based on? Power surge? Oh, okay. Aren't y'all glad we're not in your day with all these philosophical ways and stuff and these mundane, wicked thoughts and such as, ooh, let me love you half to death. Grace, 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 grace. Anyway, hallelujah. Let us stand. Glory to the King. Hallelujah. And this is the will of Yah, even your sanctification. Glory to the King. You know, it's a blessing. You are the ones that are, have, have not only you see you proved by your footprint, footstep that your heart is in the right place. That you really truly mean business. And all you out, you Israelites that are out there that are camped out, and I've seen your pictures on Facebook, and you send them to me privately, and and uh, some of them are so deep into the city they even got a tent pitched in the house. <laughs> that, I said, man, look at them Israelites. That's pressing right there. Got it pitched, pitched right in the house. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful right there, boy. I said, that's what I'm talking about, getting it done. Yes, <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, anyway, let the whole world mock, deride, chide, ridicule, and the whole nine yards all they want and stuff. But one thing we know for sure, we're going to the kingdom, man. Because the kingdom of heaven suffer violence and violence. We're going to take it by force. Now, I'm going to take it by force. I got anything to do with it. Hallelujah. We're going to the kingdom, and I thank the Father for it. Ah, hallelujah. Well, anyway, Father, we thank you for these words of truth. We pray these saying sing deep down in the hearts of your chosen seed, your people. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Yahshua Hamashiach, protect us, watch over us. Until the next time we're gathered together in your wonderful name, amen. amen. Shalom. Shalom, Israel. Uh oh, look at him looking.
Uh-oh, look at him looking. 